um, U.S. Bank Stadium. Joining us now is the man who made the Garrett Bradbury selection, Rick Spielman, general manager of the Minnesota Vikings. Hi, Rick. How you doing? Uh, pretty well. The, um, uh, the selection of Garrett Bradbury for the thousands here at U.S. Bank Stadium, uh, widely, widely accepted and, um, and praised. They, uh, they went nuts, quite honestly. What did you like about Garrett Bradbury? Well, he's a uh, phenomenal athlete. Uh, he fits into the scheme that we're going to run. I know going through the draft meetings over the past two or three weeks and listening to the coaches and listening to them describe uh, the traits that they have to have, these offensive linemen have to have to play in our scheme was very clearly defined, and he definitely checked all the boxes in that area. Uh, he also checks the boxes on being a very smart, passionate football player that's a high-character kid off the field. Um, I got an opportunity to see him play live uh, against the uh, North or against uh, Wake Forest. Mm. We followed his progress and had a very good Senior Bowl down there, and just continued to impress us as we went through the Senior Bowl and the Combine. We did spend some time visiting with him at the Senior Bowl, and also interviewed him as one of our core guys at the uh, combine and, and you just fall in love with the kid because of his heart and passion and, and how much football means to him. Yeah, Garrett Bradbury's uh, combine was uh, fantastic from a measurable standpoint as well. One of the things that, that jumped out to me when I, when I watched him, Rick, was Garrett Bradbury's ability to decode a play as it's happening, stunts and movements, and figure out mid-play the adjustments that he needs to make was really impressive, and uh, I didn't see defense. Defenses would try to throw things at him, and he was always able to make that adjustment, and he seems like a really high IQ football player. Well, we, we uh, give these guys probably two or three different types of intelligence tests, mm. and he was uh, one of the highest guys in the draft on how he came out on those scores. So there was no question uh, he was going to check all the boxes uh, from the tests we give him, and then when we interviewed him and actually watched his tape while we were at the combine and had him go through all the adjustments he made and the coaches gave him different scenarios, uh, he just rattled them off like he was an offensive coordinator. So I know one of the key traits and one of the most important traits is not only being able to block up front, but also being able to think and think quickly on your feet because a lot of things happen fast. You, you know, Rick, um, and off you, what you said to the media a couple of days ago at your press conference, most importantly for all involved, you didn't take a cornerback, which means you can go <laughs> home to your wife, Michelle. Well, my <laughs> wife told me that uh, if you take a corner, just pack a bag and then you can live with Coach Zimmer for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> uh, Rick Spielman, general manager for the Vikings, talking Although about... Although we didn't say we may be trying him at corner, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a position flexibility. I mean, that definitely would stretch that. Um, Rick, select, Rick and his staff selected Garrett Bradbury, center from North Carolina State. Ben? Yeah, we've talked a lot about uh, what this offense is going to look like and, and scheme fit for possibly the horizontalness of the run game and the blocking scheme. But also on top of that is, was there any play and any evaluation of what the rest of the division was doing defensively with the Packers, especially now with Rashawn Gary, what the, what the Bears did last year and it bolstered up their defense? Did that have a play and, and part of the formula of who you guys were going to go after? Yeah, all the defenses that we play against uh, are very athletic defenses now, mm -hmm. and they got some guys that, that move up front, and we're going to have to be able to match that. And I think when we went, especially as we look through all these offensive linemen, one of the things you're always looking for is are the guys that we take going to be able to match up with the uh, defensive linemen that we have to play in this division? And uh, we are very excited that, uh, that Garrett was there because we know he's going to be able to do that. Uh, as somebody that likes to trade uh, a lot uh, through the drafts, you trade as much as anybody. It, are all surprised that we've gotten to this stage of the first round and there's only been two trades executed? Yeah, usually it's a lot more active. Yeah. I know we had a few calls uh, coming our way, but we didn't want to, uh, a lot of them we didn't want to drop too far down because I think, and I don't know what's happened since I uh, left the draft room, but I know there should be a, a, a run on offensive linemen. And yep. just the word on the street was there was going to be maybe up to eight guys on the offensive line getting drafted tonight in, right. on, uh, on, in the first round. So we wanted to make sure that we got our guy. And when he was sitting there, 
uh, we cut all the trade talks off and, and hmm. wanted to make sure we landed Bradbury. That's great. A couple of quickies to close for the GM. Rick, for, for, the, for the fans that are out there, are there any guys currently in the NFL that that uh, this kid reminds you of or someone that you could kind of compare him to in, in, in style and what he can accomplish? Well, I, I mean, you can go down and look, you know, uh, at the Kelsey at the Philadelphia. Yep. Um, I know when we talk with uh, Kubiak and, and Rico Dennison about some of the guys they have had, um, he had a lot of similar traits to the success they had when they were out in Denver and even down in Houston. So I know uh, the one thing that really sticks out about him, and especially if he does end up playing at center, is his hand size was an inch, uh, an inch bigger than almost any other offensive lineman. Uh, so that mm. tells you that he has very good, not only can he play and move and stuff, but that hand size is very important for an offensive center as well. You know, I, I know a lot more has to happen in the next couple of days with draft picks and all that stuff. But as it is right now, you know, it looks like a guy like Josh Klein is going to be the starting guard on the offensive line. Could you just kind of reiterate what he brings to the table and what the Vikings fans can start thinking about as you compile the, the guys that you have now and potentially the guys you have later on in the draft? Yeah, there was two critical f factors on why we uh, signed Josh Klein as one. We had monitored him. He's played center and guard uh, and has started at guard, uh, not only for Tennessee, but also in New England. I know uh, Tennessee gave him a pretty significant contract a year ago. And when they did release him, uh, we got on it right away. I know I had our offensive line staff look at him to make sure I understood what they were looking at and looking for as far as the traits that we want. And he's a very physical run blocker. He has excellent lateral quickness. Uh, he fit all the traits that, that, that they've been talking about. And when you signed him, because he was cut and he wasn't an unrestricted free agent, it also was a huge benefit for us because it doesn't factor into our potential compensatory picks next year. So you, um, so you currently have seven picks left. Uh, that, that's probably a little light for the way you like it, right? Well, we'll see how the draft comes uh, tomorrow night, and uh, I do prefer to trade down, but also depends on who's on the board and what opportunities are there. But uh, we always try to land 10 if we can, um, but if not, we're just going to take the best football players that are going to help our football team next year. I'll mention, Rick, as uh, uh, you uh, correctly predicted this, Baltimore just traded with the Eagles, and the Eagles went up and, trade and picked up tackle Andre Dillard with the 22nd pick. And uh, so you were right that there was going to be a run on linemen, and there was a lot of it, seemingly a lot of value there. Was uh, Andre Dillard on, on your radar at all for your pick? I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about any other players on our draft board. I'll just tell you <laughs> how excited trying. we were to get. get yeah. <laughs> Paul, what are you going to learn? I mean, my God, how many, how many questions are you going to ask me? I am a pretty good dancer around your little BS <laughs> questions that you try to kind of filter in there and get a little kidney jab every now and then. Rick, one of these days, I'm going to get you. Rick, I know you want to get back into the draft room. Last one. Um, from, your, from your scouts through – the personnel department, those who intimately work with you. How much work do they put in during the course of a year that lead to uh, even it, a single it, draft pick? I think, uh, you know, when Scott Studwell uh, talked about it at his press conference the other day, and those guys spending 200 days a year out there on the road, uh, and those guys are the lifeline of this organization. Uh, they, don't, they live in different cities. Um, we try to keep them as connected as we can to our team. They come in maybe three or four times a year. Uh, but the, the job that those college scouts do and the information they get uh, and all the background that we need, uh, they do a phenomenal job. And I'm very, very blessed and very fortunate to have the staff that I have. Congratulations, Rick, and uh, best of luck with uh, Friday and Saturday, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me Thanks, on. Rick.